Hey guys, Chris and Lindsay here. We are back coming to you from Mulahe, which is probably a surprise to you because where we left you, we were in Los Barillas, and I was doing a Dear Diary rant about how my emotions were completely shot because Los Barillas was not what I expected. So just to give you a heads up, this is going to be a little bit of a talking head episode because there's a lot to say and not a lot of footage that we have to go along with it. But it is important information, particularly if you're following along with our story. So that being said, let's jump right into it. First, we want to thank all of our Patreons, and also we have a new Patreon. Shout out to Daryl. Thank you for subscribing to our Patreon. Patreon is a great way that you can support us financially. Plus, you get all kinds of benefits for joining at different levels, and you get exclusive footage. And so one of the things that we decided to do is we're going to be doing more of our budget um, and sharing videos about some of the tips and tricks we have, but we're really going to get into the details in Patreon. So all of our patrons that join will have the ability to ask specific questions and we'll break down exactly month to month um, what we did and how we lived because we live under $2,000 a month while we're on the road. That puts us just barely above poverty level if you are keeping track of the poverty level. So that is just something else among all the other deeper in-depth re RV remodel videos that we've got there that you can expect to join there. So thank you, Daryl, for joining, and thank you for the last handful of people that have joined over the last couple of weeks. We hope to see that number keep growing because that allows us to continue to do what we do. So how did we get all the way back to Mulahe? Because we were like almost on the southern tip of Baja, and we pretty much tucked our tails and headed you, back north. You want the long story or the short story? It's a long story. You want the long story? Yeah. I wanted to give you the short story. <laughs> we got in the RV and we turned the ignition on. And then we drove yeah. about 325 miles. Yeah. Long way, seven hour drive. But before we left Los Barillas, or after we left Los Barillas, we went over to Toto Santos. It was, New Year's was coming up. We didn't want to be in a place where it was going to be crazy loud. We are, I just turned 40, Lindsay's 35. We're not like really old and grunt, crouchy, whatever. Crotchety is the word, crotchety? <laughs> or cro that's weird. But we're usually in bed by 10. Nine. <laughs> Nine or 10. Nine. And we're not party animals. That's not our scene. Even so. though New Year's Eve is our anniversary, our anniversary too. Happy anniversary. Mm -hmm. All right. Eight years. We're into our ninth year now. Nine years. Yeah. All right. Going strong. I think we're going strong. <laughs> so we went back to where we celebrated our anniversary two years prior, which is just outside of Todos Santos. It's basically a dirt parking lot um, called La Pastora. And Lindsay loves it there because there's beautiful waves in the morning. It's on the Pacific side, so there's surfers out mm -hmm. there. It's the beach. It's the so beach. It's we love the beach. It's just a very wide beach, so you're not like on the water, but... Super mellow. We know the people there are waking up bright and early to go surfing every day, so it's not crazy loud all the time. And there's whales. You can actually watch the uh, humpback whales breaching and playing and all that, like right from the shore. You can see them right off there. So we did that. And we made some friends, oh, it rained on us, it turned that dirt into mud. And then once the mud dried, we got out because we made some friends that were staying at a nearby campground in Los Cerritos area, which is just south of Todos Santos. Yeah, so we went to go check out this RV park in Cerritos, and it was really nice. So we were actually planning to stay there for about a month. Yep. Um, and we were there, what, 10, 12 days? 10 or 12 days. And we, it was really, really, really nice RV park. Um, we got the last spot. Yeah. There were only 13 spots, and we got the last one, and we were able to reserve it for the whole month, which was great. Had incredibly fast Wi-Fi, which we needed for work. Um, it wasn't a pretty good location, but not really for us because we don't it, have a tow vehicle. It was inconvenient. So just to get to the grocery store, we had to ride our bikes like two miles on the highway. Which is crazy. So, which is nuts. So, and it, it was just, it just was not convenient. And it's about a mile and a half to the beach, which isn't the end of the world. Every morning we would walk the dogs and we'd walk down to the beach and walk through the desert. It's great, but it was really inconvenient when it came to the practical things, um, like getting food, getting drinking water, doing laundry, all the things that we needed it was, to do. It was also a pricey area, uh, food, uh, restaurants, all of that was definitely more American prices. Which so. is Toto Santos, which was why we weren't really thinking we'd go there anyway. But the people in the car and Casa Caravan is a name, and the people there are amazing. Made some good friends in the short time that we were there. Had community meals together. Anytime somebody's going in town, they offered to give us a ride. Really awesome place, but it just didn't feel right. 
and we needed to reset because we were dealing with our expectations being totally shattered of going back down to the southern part of Baja. So we decided we needed to go back to our happy place, which was a little beach along the Bay of Conception. So we went back to our favorite beach on the Bay of Conception and ended up meeting up with some friends there that we had met in Colorado earlier uh, this year. Which is great. Bobby and Mary, we met them. They were the first people we met back out on the road once we left Florida. And they, when we met them, they were talking about wanting to go to Baja, but they were kind of scared and were like, oh, we'll teach you everything. So we taught them all the ropes. Now they know Baja better than we do. Yeah. It was really great to catch up with them over that long weekend. And then we made our way back here to um, to Mule. Yeah. And incidentally, we had Bobby and Mary, they were staying here at Don Chano's before they met us at the beach, and we had them reserve a spot for us, and it was a good thing that we did because Don Chano's was pretty much full. So here's our little spiel um, mm -hmm. that we're going to give you about Baja and about some of the internal things that Lindsay and I have been dealing with. Um, the reality is Baja is packed right now. And there's a variety of reasons we think that's the case. We think this is the first time in two years Canadians have been allowed down here. So a lot of Canadians traveled down here. It's also post, uh, well, still in, but post the time where everybody bought RVs with all their pandemic money and decided they were going to run around and jobs became virtual and all that. So more people than normal have packed down here into Baja. And it's really made things challenging. Oh, by the way, we have also encouraged people. Yeah. We've met no fewer than 12 or 13 different groups of people just in the Mulahe area and the Bay of Conception that have said, hey, we recognize you. You're the whole reason we planned our trip down here. So part of us was like really flattered. And we know we communicate with you guys. If you leave a comment, you know we always respond. If you send us an email, we always respond. So we've developed relationships with you on the other side of this camera over the last couple of years. And so it's always great to meet people who are like, we love what you told us. We love the advice. We planned our trip around what you said. The problem is um, there's a lot of people that aren't doing this thing right. It's making it harder for all of us because there's so many people on the road. Yeah, in fact, when we made it back to our favorite beach on the Bay of Conception, there were campers that were, do I want to say hoarding spots? Hoarding spots. Hoarding spots. They're holding, holding spots for two hoarding weeks. Hoarding spots. And we know for a fact they held them for two weeks because they got there as we were leaving and basically took one of the spots that we had been in when we left to hold for their friends. So instead of allowing tran transient people stay there for a few days, they basically parked their trucks in these spots and we told the people, in. no. I have and friends coming. Don't know when they're going to arrive. But you can't stay here. And it so. was a, it's a terrible example, but that's not the only example. This happened several times in several different beaches. It's just, it's really hard for us to come to terms with the fact that we're encouraging people to live this lifestyle. We want you to know what it's like to come to Baja and to enjoy it. But right now, if you were to come down here and try to go to our favorite beach, you're not going to be able to find a place, which means you're not going to enjoy your time here. And you're going to say, Chris and Lindsay told us the wrong things. They told us that we'd come and we'd have beautiful drone footage. We showed you paddle boarding and snorkeling, all this great stuff we can show you about how great it is. The problem is there's so many people down here that are making it tough for everybody just to enjoy. So we're back here in Mulahe and you know that our fridge broke. We've updated you on that. And then our friends came into town that we've been waiting on since we've got here. They were supposed to be down here in December. They finally arrived and they brought us all sorts of goodies. Are you ready for Christmas? Yes. You are ready for Christmas. Here's what I got. This is what I got Lindsay for Christmas. What is it? Oh, you tell me. An Tele Power 4600. What is it? A converter? It's a power converter. A power converter? I've always wanted a power converter. Well, we've been limping along for the last two and a half months without power converter for our power system. And so power converter, basically, when you're plugged into shore power in an RV like ours, that power converter will change the 110 into 12 volt or it'll allow the 12 volt to charge the batteries. And uh, that hasn't been happening. We've been relying on solar on a roof, which is great. Solar has been charging our batteries, but uh, we're plugged into shore power and we're not able to actually use 
the shore power to charge your battery. So I got you that. Yay! You want to see what else I got you? Yes. Okay, we'll put this here. <laughs> Thirty amp transfer switch. Yeah. Yes. So thirty amp transfer switch. What that's going to do is it's going to allow us to use our outlets that we have once we wire it together. Of course, we're going to be able to use our outlets when we're boondocking, that's just like when we're cool. plugged into short power. Yeah, I like aren't, that. Aren't you excited? I figured since we're fixing the power converter, we might as well throw a little more power into the power. Well, you want to know what else we got? Yeah. It's heavy. An impact extension set. I think this is for you. <laughs> this is, I'm not going to use this. Well, see what had happened was uh, last time we got our tires balanced and rotated um, at our favorite discount tire store, uh, they didn't uh, completely secure the bolts on the on the rims, and we almost had the rims Oops. come flying off. So I need to have this so that I can tighten down those all by myself. I figured it out. I did it by hand already. I borrowed one. But uh, yeah, so there's that. And then there's this. Shoes. Oh, those are so, those are awesome looking These shoes. are huge. These are not going to fit me. Oh, they must be mine. Running shoes. So run. you're going to go running? Yeah, I've been running. <laughs> New Balance, our favorite company. Did a movie a documentary a while ago on American manufacturing. New Balance was the last remaining American manufactured shoes, not all of them, but man, that's awesome. Christmas is shaping up really well for you. It's all for you. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Lindsay, I got you something. Here you go. I mean, Santa, Santa got you something. <gasps> Dairy-free creamer. Yes. Always need this. I always need my dairy-free creamer because it is hard to find here. If not impossible. And this is, shel this is shelf stable, so it doesn't have to be refrigerated. We store it away. And uh, that's great. Six boxes. That'll Woo! last you a little while. Oh, and this one you're really going to love. Throw it at me. <laughs> what? A fridge. A mini fridge. <laughs> no, there's not a mini fridge in this box. <laughs> we already have it set up. We, and keeping our food cold. We did that right away. <laughs> our food's been on ice for over a week. So but that was nice to have. The idea is our friends Scott and Melissa, we're so grateful for them. If you rewind a little while back, we brought a tire down for a couple that we had no idea who they were. We just connected with them through Talk Baja. They needed a tire because they had a blowout in their trailer. So um, when we needed something, we had other people offer. We posted on Talk Baja as well when our fridge broke. And then our friends were coming down and they said, we'll bring the stuff for you. So thank you to Scott and Melissa. That is one of the beautiful things about life on the road, particularly here in Baja. Once you get halfway down, there's one road that goes straight down. And before you get there, you either have the one up north and the five, then they meet in the one and it just runs straight down. So mm -hmm. everybody has to drive down here. Everybody has to drive back up. So if you can bring something along to help somebody else out, it's a great thing. Do it. And Scott and Melissa really helped us out with all that stuff. Definitely needs. The only thing that was kind of a want, I think, was my shoes. Mm -hmm. But that's because I started exercising more. One last thing, and part of our journey this time for being in Mulahe and why we're here and why we love being here is because we have focused on work a tremendous amount. YouTube is just one tiny little piece of what we do. I'm going to get into a future video that shares more because we're getting asked more often, hey, how do you support yourself on the road? We do not break even on the road. We're having to borrow from savings, long story short. But we work incredibly hard and we do have revenue coming in uh, because of that work. So we are not just sitting on a beach for six months. In fact, we're like, we're probably the opposite. We are going where we can get cell service or Wi-Fi and we're staring at computer screens for eight, 10 hours a day, if not longer. So our future plans, we are gonna head back south. We have uh, two sets of friends joining us, of course, Scott and Melissa, who we've already talked about, and then our friends from Arizona, Joe and Lily. And they're on the road. Just got a text from them just a minute ago. They just hit the road, so they'll be down here in two and a half, three days. Awesome. Can't and, wait to uh, see them. We're going to do a little, a little caravan together. 
Note that we, you know, we're real people and we try to project ourselves as the real story and how it goes, which means we don't glamorize things and we don't set up shots and shots and all that stuff, which means we also respect the privacy of people that we meet and friends that we have. So uh, what you see in the next couple videos of us doing things, um, you may not see our friends very much or we may just set the camera down because we want to enjoy experiencing life with our friends. That's just a heads up that when we travel with our friends, we don't really know what's going to happen, but we're going to be traveling south together for the next couple months, and we are super excited about that. On that note, we are going to go ahead and wrap up so we can get the dogs outside for a nice long W-A-L-K. They can't spell, but they can definitely listen, and they know what that word means. That being said, thanks for being a part of our journey. Thank you for those of you who just joined us and those of you who have been with us for a while. Steve, if you've watched to this point, this is a new shirt three days ago. So it's not really a new shirt. I got somebody who's keeping track of how many shirts I have. I have nine, <laughs> nine shirts, which is probably seven too many. But I have nine shirts that I rotate through. I wear one shirt for three or four days, then I throw another shirt on. I wear that for three or four days. And sometimes we do laundry, but usually I've only worn like three shirts the whole time. We're frugal. You know that. Thanks for being a part of our story. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, like this video, leave us a comment. You think Felicia's still here? Felicia, I think she's long gone. Are you still out there, Felicia? Yeah. Are you there? Felicia? If so. Bye. Bye, Felicia. <laughs>